We'll get started with the land acknowledgement. Um, Simcoe County District School Board acknowledges that we are situated on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe people. The Anishinaabe include Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We are dedicated to honoring indigenous history and culture and committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nation, Métis and Inuit people. Um, next, we'll move on to um, welcoming our new members. I would like to welcome Trustee Connors, Trustee Grummet, Principal Jody Jowett, and Vice Principal Bray Montgomery to the Parent Involvement Committee. Trustee Connors has three children, ages 20, 17 and 14, they all attended WH Day. Two were in the extended French program and the youngest was in the French immersion program. The oldest is currently in her third year of university and the other two attended Bradford, attend Bradford District High School. Trustee Connors first became involved with parent council in 2006 when her oldest started JK. Trustee Gromet is married with two children. Lucy is 14 and attends Eastview Secondary School. And Grayson is 18 and attends Fanshawe College with the plan to become an electrician. Born and raised in Elmville, Trustee Gromit continues to live locally in Springwater Township. Both her children attended Forest Hill from kindergarten to grade eight. Trustee Gromit has two dogs who are sometimes the nicest people in her house. Trustee Grummet is part of the fundraising and communication team at the Canadian Mental Health Association. Um, Sim Simcoe County Branch. She has worked in the mental health and addiction field for over 22 years and in a variety of roles, including case management, crisis intervention, uh, outreach support and education. Jody Jowett, principal at West Bayfield Elementary School, mother of three humans who attend Simcoe County District School Board Schools. She is an outdoor enthusiast and special education advocate. Vice Principal Montgomery has been with the Simcoe County District School Board since 2000. She has served as a teacher of English, history, and special education. Um, Bray was one of the first 16 student success teachers in the Simcoe County District School Board and helped set the pathway for supporting at-risk students. Bray also served as the special education consultant um, for the Simcoe County District School Board for many years before becoming the special education chair at Aurelia Secondary School when it first opened. In 2018, Gray became a vice principal at Eastview Secondary School, where she is now. And then we'll move next on to the PIC mandate. Um, so the PIC mandate is to support, encourage, and enhance parent engagement at the board level to improve student achievement and well-being. Also provide information and advice to the board on parent engagement communicate with and support school councils and undertake activities to help parents support their children's learning at home and at school. Uh, next on the list on our agenda will be elections of the chairperson and I'll pass that on to Susan. I just would also like to welcome Trustee Powell who is the trustee for Barry Wards 4, 5, and 6 to pick. Uh, welcome. Uh, we now move to the election of the chairperson. As per board bylaws, I would like to outline the process for this evening's virtual election for the chairperson of the Parent Involvement Committee. I will be designating principals Jowett and Montgomery to act as tellers to count the email ballots for the election if required. If only one person is nominated and the elect and elects to stand, that member shall be declared elected by acclamation. Where more than one nominee stands for election, a vote will be taken by emailed ballot and the number receiving a majority of the votes cast shall be declared elected. If no nominee receives a majority of the votes cast, the name of the member receiving the fewest votes shall be dropped from the emailed ballot. 
provided at least two nominees shall remain on the ballot. If no nominee receives a majority and two or more nominees are tied, respecting the fewest votes, those nominees will be asked to email Executive Assistant Sove, Kim, and me a number between one and 10. Prior to the nominees emailing their numbers, I will choose a number between one and 10, which I will share by email with Executive Assistant Sove and Principal Jowett. Once Executive Assistant Sove and I are in receipt of the numbers emailed by the nominees, I will advise Principal Jowett, who will state the number chosen by me. The nominee whose number is closest to the number without going over will remain on the ballot. If all of the nominees go over the number chosen by me or all of the nominees cho choose the same number, I will choose another number and the above process will be repeated. If there are two or more nominees tied and two of these numbers nominees choose the same number that is closest to the number chosen by me without going over and the other remaining nominees email a number that was not the closest or went over the number chosen by me, those nominees will be dropped from the ballot and the above process will be repeated for the remaining nominees who chose the same number closest to the number that I chose without going over. In the event of a tied vote with two nominees remaining, the process outlined above regarding the tied votes will be followed. The nominee who, whose number is closest to the number chosen by me without going over will be the sex, successful nominee. If the two nominees go over the number chosen by me or pick the same number, the above process will be repeated. When I call for nominations for the office of the chairperson of the Parent Involvement Committee, a seconder for the nomination is also required. I will then ask each person nominated if they are willing to stand, and I will then be asking three times for any other further nominations. Once nominations have been completed, those nominated will be given the opportunity to speak to their nomination. The order of speakers will be based on the order of the nomination. Once the nominations have been completed and those nominated have spoken, members will be asked to email their ballot to Executive Assistant Sove and me. The ballots will then be emailed to Principal Jowett and Montgomery. Principal Jowett will provide the teller's report to me and I will then announce if a candidate has received a majority of the votes and is now chairperson of the Parent Involvement Committee. Committee members by motion may order the destruction of the email ballots cast in the election. The new chairperson will assume the role of the chair and will conduct the nominations for the office of the vice chairperson. Please note that the term of office will be as follows, as per the Ontario Regulation 614, School Councils and Parent Involvement Committee. Section 37.1, the term of office of some of the parent members of Parent Involvement Committee shall be one year, and the term of office of some of the parent members shall be two years as provided in the bylaws of the committee. Section two, a member or subsection two, a member of a parent involvement committee may be reappointed or reelected to the committee for more than one term unless otherwise provided in the bylaws of the committee. Officers, section three, subsection one, a parent involvement committee shall have a chair or if the bylaws of the committee so provide co-chairs. And in our instance, it is a vice chair. Subsection two, the co-chair or the chair or vice chair of a parent involvement committee must be the parent members of the committee and shall be elected for a two-year term by the parent members of the committee at the first meeting of the committee in each school year that there is a vacancy in the office of chair or vice chair. Subsection three, only parent members with a two-year term are eligible to be elected to the position of chair or co-chair. I will now call for the nominations for the office of the chairperson of the Parent Involvement Committee. And just to let you know that Lisa has volunteered to uh, step forward as the chairperson or the nominee for chairperson. Nadia has her hand up. Okay. Nadia? Uh, Lisa, are you willing to stand? Yes, I am. Are there any further nominations? Are there any further nominations? And are there any further nominations? Lisa, would you like to speak to your nomination? Um, 
like to say something about myself or I, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. You, you can share a little bit of information about yourself if you wish, if not, then, um, if there are no other, uh, nominations from anyone else, I don't see any hands going up. I don't see any hands either. Okay. Um, so my name is Lisa. I have four kids, um, two have graduated. One is in third year university. And, and then I also have two kids in high school at Nantire Shores in Innisfil. And I've been a part of parent council in various aspects, including chair, secretary, as well as volunteering for the past 17 years. So I've been in the school board setting or the school volunteer setting for like a, a long time. <laughs> um, and I've also received a volunteer award with the Simcoe County District School Board. And I'm a firm believer in volunteering and giving back to my community. Great, thank you. Um, I didn't see a second for the nomination. Do I have a second for the nomination? Andrea, thank you very much. Okay. Um, as there were no uh, additional nominations, uh, Chairperson uh, Lisa has now been acclaimed. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I look forward to working with everyone. I will now turn it over to our new Chairperson. Okay, so then, um, because I was vice chair and now I've moved into the chair position, we will have to do elections for a vice chair. Um, so I will now call for nominations for the position of vice chair of the parent involvement committee. I would like to, for, to, um, to call for further nominations for the vice chair position. Oh, I've got a hand up, Tony. Sorry, is there? Tony and Natasha have their hands up. Okay. Now it's just Natasha, so if you would like to speak. My apologies, my internet's a little laggy, um, but I think, did you call on me? Uh, no, we just saw your hand up. So oh, okay. do you have somebody that you would like to. I was, uh, I was just going to nominate Richard for vice chair. I'm not sure if they are interested, but I just want to nominate Richard. Richard, would you like to stand for vice chair position? I can do that. Sure. So I would like to call for any further nominations for vice chair position. I would like to call for further nominations for the vice chair position. So seeing no further nominations, I don't see any hands up anywhere. Um, Richard will be acclaimed as vice chair of the parent involvement committee. All those in favor? Do we need a seconder for this? Andrea? Tony, Michelle, I'm looking for hands, sorry. We're good, we just needed the two. Okay, so we're good. So motion carried. And then the next is approval of agenda. At this time, I'm looking for a motion that the agenda be approved as printed. So I see Nadia's hand and Tony's hand. So thank you for the motion and for seconding the motion to approve. The motion to approve the agenda has been carried. Um, next, moving on to approval of the September 13th, 2022 minutes. At this time, I'm looking for a motion that the parent Parent Involvement Committee minutes from September 13, 2022 be approved as printed. 
So I have Tony, thank you for your motion to approve. And I just need a seconder, Andrea. Um, thank you for seconding the motion to approve. The motion that the minutes of September 13th, 2022 be approved as printed has been carried. Um, next on the agenda is our guest speakers. Um, so first would be the Parent Outreach Mathematics Program. I would like to introduce Kristen Fennell. Principal of School Effectiveness and Improving Student Achievement in Mathematics um, and Kitloose District School Effectiveness Facilitator for Mathematics K-9. Kristen Fennell, Principal of School Effectiveness and Improving Student Achievements in Mathematics has been with the Simcoe County District School Board for 16 years, which time she has served as an elementary teacher, ASD, County classroom teacher, math resource teacher, vice principal, and principal. She is a mother of four, fitness instructor, and former member of the communications facility faculty at Georgian College. Kit Luce, I hope I'm saying that right, is district school effectiveness facilitator for mathematics K to nine. She has been an educator with the mathematics resource teacher. Um, and school-based instruction and assessment facilitator. She is a parent of many children who are now adults, including foster children with disabilities. Prior to teaching for the Simcoe County District School Board, she worked with for what is now Empower Simcoe and was a member of SEAC at the board. Thank you very much, Lisa. Kit is going to share her screen. We just have a, a short, uh, a few slides to be able to share with you this evening. Similar to Trustee Grummet, I also have two little pups who have sat quietly through a couple of meetings so far this evening, and I'm very hopeful that that continues over the next five to 10 minutes. Um, okay, so during the 2021-2022 school year, our district math team planned and facilitated three virtual learning sessions for parents, guardians, and caregivers. And the goal was to engage them as partners in students' math learning. So these sessions focused really on, on practical and fun ways to support students with their math learning. We really wanted families to help to engage uh, their children at home. And in partnership uh, with the Parent Involvement Committee, as well as our as funding from our literacy and numeracy register, we were able to um, create 200 math kits. They were really, you'll learn a little bit more about what those look like, but they were really a, a fulsome kit of manipulatives that uh, were sent out to each family prior to the start of the sessions, and that they would be able to um, use those kits um, with their children um, once they had really learned about how through the different sessions. So our next slide talks a little bit um, just to show you what it was that we did. So we started with making math connections at home. And this first session in March explored where we find numbers and patterns, um, different opportunities for measurements and shapes in our daily lives. Then in April, we focused on problem solving. So supporting families to um, how to encourage their children to be active thinkers and problem solvers in both mathematics and around the house, because there are a lot of commonalities there in how we solve everyday problems and how we're looking and approaching problems in the math classroom. And then the third session um, we facilitated in May. And that was having fun with math facts at home. So that was really around a lot of games to support uh, math fluency and enjoyment and engagement in mathematics. So these math packs are something um, that Kit is going to tell you a little bit about. Uh, so we sent out 196 of these packs. And that actually represented uh, more students than that. Um, and families uh, picked those up from the school 
And then during each session, we focused on the kits and how to use them with some really practical uh, resources and hands-on activity. So each kit uh, included uh, something called Tansgrams, linking cubes, which were um, two centimeter cubes that connect, square tiles, some dice and a deck of playing cards, a measuring tape that was a meter long. And we also included activity cards with instructions for different games and tasks you can do along with some whiteboard markers uh, to use on the laminated sheets. So when we were planning the sessions, we first sent out a survey and 170 families answered that survey and told us what they were interested in. They rated and based on that information, we chose the content for three sessions. Those sessions were then promoted through school newsletters, through social media, through messaging to all our classroom educators to share with families. And when families registered, we sent them reminder emails. Families were encouraged to register for one, two, or all three of the sessions. And each family who registered for at least one session received one of the math kits. So as I mentioned, there were 196 families registered. At the first session, we had 113 families join and listen to the webinar. We had 60 at the second and uh, 20 at the, the third session, which I think is an indication of the timing. Our schedule was actually bumped because of uh, some school closures earlier in the year. So that last session in May was a little bit later. However, we recorded all of the sessions and those links were sent to everyone who registered whether they attended or not. And in checking on that, what's exciting is that we can see that these sessions were uh, viewed. Have, you can see the views there between 60 and 80 views for each of the, the webinars. And we got some great feedback. We've been also sharing the, the webinars through schools newsletters and uh, also with classroom educators who can send them home, send the links home. Do we have a little bit of time to watch one of, uh, a couple of minutes from one of the sessions? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So one of the first sessions, and Kristen, uh, can you confirm that you're seeing what I'm sharing? You should. Yes, we can see it, Kit. Perfect, thank you. So the first session really talked about what students learn at school and how that is can be mirrored in the home and the community. So let's just listen to a little clip. Kit, we don't have volume on that yet. Oh, that is odd. It might be in your settings above. Okay, I will take a look. I apologize. I will reshare. And we'll try this again. We can easily talk about numbers. How's that? How many do you see? Yes. Uh, All right. I'll just backtrack it a little bit. There we go. About number. How many do you see? Uh, how many do you see in rows and columns, which is this really important structure for students? How many bags? You might talk about measurement with mass and capacity. Grocery stores are a great place to talk about money and unit prices. And in our community, as we drive around, we're seeing construction, for example, provides those opportunities to talk about measurement, about the angles you see, about shape, um, about area and volume and height. You might see different shapes, or you might talk about financial costs. 
So one of the things you'll notice on this one, which was our first session, is that we had quite a number of children at these sessions. And although the, the email went out with the information that this was intended for the adults in the family and the caregivers, we did have a lot of children, which was um, maybe not so exciting for them, but was really quite fun for us because some of their comments were quite lovely. Uh, and I'll just share one more little clip because from the last session, which was really about teaching um, some different games to use. Race two. This is a simple one again, and I, I've tried to choose games here that can start kind of at a basic level or, or a starting point and then kind of have some extensions that move beyond a hundred into the thousands or use a different operation. So this one is similar. Um, here you can start by racing to a hundred. Your hundreds chart that's in your kit is perfect for that as well as your number lines if you want to um, choose a different number too. So you can play this one a variety of different ways. You start with one dice and add single digits to your sum and you decide together we're going to be the first to race to a hundred or first to race to 500 or even a thousand and you could even add a second dice right and make a two digit number to add to your sum if you play with two dice there's some different ways to do that in the example shown you could choose to add each dice separately so if i roll a one and a two i add one to my sum and then two or i add three all together and or i can choose that the yellow, for example, is the tens place and the red is the ones place. So if I roll, um, I've rolled a 12 there, right? So my yellow, my one is, is, is a 10 and my two is a one and I can add 12 to my total. So you can um, decide together how you would do that or you can leave it to players to decide what they're going to do when they roll the two dice and add a bit of strategy to the game too. So you can see that the um that these webinars were very um specific they gave really clear ideas and uh we hope and from the feedback we received we uh, think that they were very well received okay, so chatting just a little bit just to give you an idea of um what we're planning for this year um we are planning to do more of, of this. So especially with these math kits and these tools and to be able to get them out into more schools. So um, this year we're planning to order actually 900 kits as opposed to 200 kits. And rest assured, we are not coming today to ask you for the funds for that. <laughs> we're just coming to share this information. Uh, we have another funding source. But um, what we're hoping to do again is to offer these sessions uh, to facilitate them again, the same kind of idea to share this information out with our families and hope to provide the, the first 200 families to register with a math kit. If um, we have more than 200 families, we may look at offering second sessions and, and certainly we will address that as the needs arise. Then we are hoping to have um, 300 math kits distributed to uh, 15 of our schools, which are served by mathematics instruction and assessment facilitators who can really work to help co-plan um, a family engagement um, activity. So that could be something that's done online, or it could be perhaps a math night where families are welcome to the school. Then the remaining 400, uh, let's see, so that I just did that backwards and I do apologize. So we have kits that are going to be distributed to the elementary schools with math facilitators and then additional kits that really other schools that are planning uh, engagement activities around mathematics for their families and would like to enrich that, they're going to be able to contact us through SCDSB Math and request some of those kits. Um, schools may choose to purchase additional kits uh, through the supplier, but at least we can hope to be able to offer them at least 20 kits each to get started on that. So again, taking the scope of what seemed to go well last year and be able to grow that. And we have funding through our student tutoring funding from the Ministry of Education. 
Um, so we're really pleased to be able to access that and, and to grow this initiative. We have some dates here on the slide that you can see it's a little bit earlier in May when we're having that third session, which we're hoping will be a little bit more successful for that. And hoping that even this group here might be able to share out these ideas. And, and when you're speaking um, with some of our individual school, school council chairs, uh, that these, these are coming and more information should be coming to them either through individual classroom educators, through the school newsletters. We will share again through social media. And if you have any additional ideas for that, we would be, uh, we would invite those. Thank you. And thank you very much um, for all of your support last year, because it wouldn't have been possible without you, uh, without the funding from PIC uh, to make this happen. And we're going to open it up to questions or, or again, suggestions. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, we will share that information with our chairs. Do we have any questions from the committee? I see uh, Maria has her hand up. Hi, how are you? Hi. I think it's just great the way that you present and everything because sometimes as uh, parents, we have uh, much better tools to explain them because when I was young, not too many years ago, okay. <laughs> you know, uh, Matt, uh, my teacher, teach me in another way. So sometimes my daughter come and she teach me in another way. And I say, oh, honey, but you know, I don't know how to do it like that. So that's something very interesting. And now that I've seen the video that you put, wow, it's a really good support for parents. Uh, to do that. So I think it's going to be very successful this year. Uh, for uh, which age are those? Thank you very much for your feedback, first of all, Maria. It, My pleasure. Certainly appreciate that. But um, this really would be targeted anywhere between K to eight. And, and certainly if um, a parent, guardian, or caregiver of, of a child in grade nine or, or Tim was interested in, in something a little bit more appropriate where some of the games are, are extended, our math team would be more than happy to, to support there. But really where we shared the word, spread the word was, was through the elementary schools, but any of the divisions, each one of the sessions had content for primary and for more of the junior and intermediate students. Oh, that's excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Any other questions from the committee? Don't see any hands. Um, so we'll move on to our second speaker, which is the secondary pathways. I would like to introduce Jason Pino, Principal of Student Achievement. Jason has been working for the Simcoe County District School Board for 22 years and has been a classroom teacher, special education teacher, and a guidance counselor before becoming a vice principal in secondary schools and adult and continuing education. For the past seven years, he was principal at two different high schools before coming to this role as principal of student achievement. Jason. Thank you very much, Lisa. And it's a pleasure for me to be here this evening. It's nice to see everybody. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I have some uh, slides and we'll be talking a little bit about uh, pathways and then my plan is to spend uh, just a few minutes um, showing you a resource that we have uh, licensed in our board for students from grades seven to 12 called My Blueprint. And so what I'll do is I'll try and go in there and navigate a little bit to show you what our students see and what they can do with that resource. All right, can I uh, just get some confirmation from someone that they can see the screen? 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you. All right, so pathways, what are pathways? We'll be looking at that. Types of pathways for students, the tools that we have to support pathway selection. Um, you know, sometimes students want to shift their pathways. We'll talk a little bit about that and uh, teams uh, to support pathways. So pathways help develop. Uh, I'm just going to move. Pathways help develop learning opportunities and programs in such a way to value all learners, all choices and all destinations. And pathways are in fact a destination as well. Creating Pathways to Success or K-12 Guidance Curriculum Document is founded on a vision in which all students leave secondary school with a clear plan for their initial post-secondary destination and with confidence in their ability to implement and revise or adapt their plan throughout their lives as they in the world around them change. This vision sees students as the architects of their own lives, um, you know, with supporting them. We also obviously are uh, scaffolding them so that they know that they are basically uh, driving this and uh, with their interests. And, and sometimes it's okay that students don't know what they want to do after high school, but we do our best to support them. Post-secondary opportunities uh, include and are all valued equally, and that is uh, many opportunities for apprenticeships. Uh, we have our uh, Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program that we, we run through our school board. Uh, we have uh, SHSM programs, we have co-op programs, a lot of different opportunities for students to get hands-on uh, experience. Community living is a, another pathway for some of our students, and then college, university, and the world of work. Okay, some of the tools to support pathways, we have the My Blueprint, which um, I'm hoping to be able to go through with you for a few minutes after this, uh, where students can research, explore, they can create a portfolio, they can track progress, uh, complete like a, a personal plan for themselves, a budget, uh, etc. And we'll go into a little more detail in that later. Uh, the Ontario Colleges uh, website is very helpful as well. Ontario Universities, there is Apprenticeship Ontario, uh, Employment Ontario Services, and Ontario Transfer. So shifting pathways, uh, as we all know, pathways are uh, fluid. Um, students uh, many times will change their minds, as we know, uh, as adults, sometimes we also change uh, our pathway in terms of what our careers are and what our jobs are. And so that's completely uh, normal and supported. Uh, during high school, uh, course changes and adjustments uh, can take place. Uh, there are ways for students to switch a pathway with supports with summer school, night school. Uh, there's some course prerequisite waivers that principals are able to sign in situations that will support students. Um, you know, there are case by case in consultation with student, parent, guardian and school, uh, where sometimes we set up meetings to talk to families and students to see how we can support that shift. Um, and then after high school, there is the on transfer, there is adult learning, we have our adult continuing education department. Um, there are also at post secondary institutions, uh, very well qualified academic advisors to help students. Teams that support pathways within the school, obviously, we have teachers who can help students and guide students, we have our guidance departments, uh, we have our student success teachers our special education and resource teachers, we have administrators, uh, we have, like I said before, programs like SHSM, we have co-op, we have our SWAC program, which is school within a college, where students uh, are attending the college five days a week, where they can get a college credit, they earn a, a college credit as well as high school credits. Uh, simultaneously, we also have a dual credit program where our students will uh, have the opportunity to be at the college one day a week. Uh, they are also able to uh, achieve a college credit with that program as well as high school credits. Also gives them an opportunity to see what college is like, uh, get their feet wet a little bit, and, uh, and hopefully that inspires them and and prepares them for for their next step as well. Outside of school, you know, we encourage our students to talk to family and friends. You know, anybody that they know that are in certain professions or jobs that they are interested in or certain pathways they're interested in to reach out to, to family and friends. Uh, we have post-secondary fairs uh, that are available uh, in the community. And we also have an after-grad program that is run through Georgian College where students have an opportunity to visit and take tours and, and hear from 
instructors on what it's like to be in college. So what I'm going to do now before we get to the questions is I want to see if I can share a new screen with you. So just bear with me. Jason, are you still trying to share your screen? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to I'm, I'm trying to find the uh, website here. I just have it up, but for some reason it's not coming up for me to choose. Mm -hmm. So I'll just try one more thing here. That's the my blueprint you're going to walk us through. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just for some reason not coming up as one of my options to share. Let's see. Okay, I think I found it. Awesome. All right, so is everyone able to see that? Yes, I see it. Okay, fantastic. So uh, students from grade seven to 12 have, uh, have access to this resource. So it's my blueprint. Um, Another uh, idea would be also for any kind of school council meetings. This is a great way for uh, for parents to learn more about what access, uh, what kind of access students have in terms of uh, helping them decide what pathway they want to choose. And so this is the what the student would see. And so um, I'm in the all students will have all of what you see here. So when you go to who am I, it's really neat because it gives you an opportunity, gives the students an opportunity to fill out different surveys like learning styles, personality, uh, interests, knowledge, motivations. So these are all surveys they would complete. And then the program actually matches those things to what might um, what kind of learning style the student has and that what does that match well with in terms of courses that they might want to choose as well as uh, pathways, uh, careers, jobs, anything in that respect. So I'll just show you, I did, I completed some of this over the last couple of days, pretending to be a student. So, um, you know, you do your learning style um, survey, you can view a report, and then the report tells you what kind of learner you are. So in here, you can see that I'm a visual learner. Um, these are my learning styles, and it gives you percentages. Um, goes into study tips on what's a great way to study if you're a visual learner, if you're an auditory learner, uh, etc. kinesthetic. Um, so very uh, useful information. Um, you can go back to uh, personality. Um, 
So I did a personality survey. Um, and so um, it gives you the results, kind of goes, you know, where are you in terms of that scale of introvert to extrovert, uh, your energy, information gathering, or do you go with intuition? Are you someone who goes with sensing, decision making, um, you know, feeling or thinking, and kind of explains all the different criteria, lifestyle and structure. So really neat information. Um, it kind of gives the student an overview of what the results were from that survey. So they start with some surveys, they can get those done. Um, and then uh, what's neat as well is that uh, if you go to match results and you can go into post-secondary matches. And so it kind of gives you an idea from everything that you filled out, uh, some of your favorite occupations and then what, um, what different occupations are there. You can click on these, it gives you the college, uh, the university, whatever it might be. You can also then click on that college or university, and that takes you right to their website. It talks to you about what, their, what the costs are of those schools, what the different programs that match uh, your interests. And as well, while they're in school with us, uh, it kind of also helps with different course matches. So, you know, what kind of post-secondary matches work well, um, and so you have, you can see that list that's provided to students. Uh, there's occupation matches. Um, so I didn't do the interest survey. So if I would have, you would have seen a different, uh, bunch of different options here for occupation. Um, and then when you go into uh, high school, uh, students are um, starting uh, in grade eight. Uh, this is where all of our students from grade eight to grade 11, and grade 12, if students uh, decide to return for a fifth year of high school, this is where they would complete their uh, course uh, option sheets. So years ago, we used to do them on paper, then we used to do them in PowerSchool, and now we are utilizing the My Blueprint. And so, as you can see, I chose some courses here. Uh, it's really neat. It, it gives you the, it has the graduation indicator here on the right, tells you how many credits that are planned, how many you've earned, uh, what are your required credits? You can go to view progress. It tells you basically it gives the students and parents, if, if parents are uh, and guardians and, and caregivers are working with their, with their student, they can see everything that the student needs and what they might be missing in a, in a certain grade and what they need to graduate. So very useful uh, information. Um, and then I'll just lastly, um, obviously there's a bunch of different things here too with work, money, but I'll just show you about post-secondary. Um, you know, it has the apprenticeship, college, university, and work workplace. Uh, so you could pick any one of these. Uh, but once again, we'll go into just college and universities and programs. And so see, it has my plan here with my categories, all based on, on the who am I and the surveys. Um, and you can pick, pick on the, the, you know, whatever province you're looking to stay. If you want to stay in Ontario, if you want to go out of province, uh, all the different institutions that have your uh, pathways, it has your requirement, what you need to get into those programs. Um, so many different um, you know, types of information. You can go to institutions um, and you can search an institution or explore one and everything is in here under each province. So everything is there for students and parents and guardians, very useful information. Um, and so uh, this is very useful when we talk about pathways and we talk about what students want to do after high school. Um, this is definitely something that we encourage all of our students and families to be familiar with. And like I said, we do use this annually with our students. This is where they choose their courses for their next year and they start that uh, in grade eight. But any student uh, from grade seven on has access to this resource. So they can get started in grade seven if they just wanna play around in here to have an idea what they might be interested in. Great, thank you, Jason, that looks really cool. Um, so I would like to open it up to see if anybody has any questions from the committee. Yes, Maria. Oh, Mr. Jason, um, I just want uh, to make a comment. Uh, it's a very, very uh, incredible platform. I didn't know about that. So now I'm gonna help my kids with this platform because it's very useful. And I mean, starting grade seven, I have four kids. So 
and one is uh, graduated from the high school and the other is going to, to high school and the other one is there. So uh, it's uh, very good information that I can be able to use and they can be able to use too. So it's just, I just want to say congratulations because I think it's a really very successful tool. Oh, thank you very much for the feedback. And yeah, it's, it is a wonderful tool. And we encourage all, all students and families to, to get on that tool. Um, you know, it's a, it, there's so many big decisions uh, for students to be making. And it's just a really uh, nice way for them to have an idea of what they might, uh, might excel at, what they would be interested in. But as you can see, I just, I just scratched the surface with that uh, very short kind of presentation on that. But there, it, it's, it's very deep. Um, but but the, the teachers in the school, the guidance counselors in the schools, uh, our elementary student success teachers can also support our students on that platform so they know how to use it properly. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I have a hand up from Natasha. Hi, um, you used the, I saw the acronym like SWAC, S-W. Oh, SWAC, yes. Oh, SWAC, sorry. I think you may have said it, but I didn't catch it. I'm just curious what it stands for and how long has, I guess, the board been using the uh, My Blueprint program? So uh, great question. So first, in terms of the SWAC program, it is stands for a school within a college. So that is an opportunity for our students who are entering grade 12. They have an opportunity to um, basically they do their five days a week at the college. So right now we have a program out of at Georgian College out of Aurelia and out of Barrie. And so students would spend five days a week at the college while they are working on earning a college credit. They are also earning their um, some high school credits. And it really gets students to that 30 credit mark, which is what they are required to graduate, but then also simultaneously gives them that experience in a high in a in a college um, atmosphere just to see what they think and and if they like it. Um, and, and so it's a really good program. Um, and so our students really excel. We have a really good retention rate in that program. Uh, very similar to our dual credit, like I said before, that's that's they're not in the college as much. It's about one day a week, but then they're also gaining one college credit. So when they do go to college, they do have that one credit. And so they're feeling confident. They already got one under their belts. And so very useful program. Um, and uh, sorry, uh, Natasha, what was the second question? about the, how long we've been using oh, the Blueprint? Yeah, I'm just curious how long the, the My Blueprint has been in place. Yeah, so it's been in place for a few years now. Uh, we are using it more over the last couple of years because now what we're doing is it is basically where our students will be doing all of their uh, course selections uh, starting from grade eight to grade 12. And so we just feel that by integrating it so that it becomes also a place where they go to choose their courses, then it's also a place where, you know, it, it also helps them choose their courses based on their interests and all of what I showed you. Thank you for your questions. I also have a hand up from Trustee Connors. Hi, I just wanted to say that um, my, I, my son's been using this quite frequently. He is in grade 12. And we used it a lot to uh, go through his university applications just to make sure that everything he was applying for, he had all the requirements for, because it actually clicked off everything. It lets you know if you're missing a course. And I just think it's a wonderful program. I know I don't remember my other daughter using it. She's three years older. So I, I do believe it is relatively new. But um, from what I've seen, it has been uh, very useful. Yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, you you are correct in that, you know, students were most students over the years have not all, but most probably were introduced to my blueprint in their grade ten careers course. Uh, but uh, starting when we started last year, we we purchased some some different licensing for students, and so now it is becoming part of their routine of, of choosing courses. And uh, it's uh, many students are a lot more familiar with it. Uh, but yes, I would agree, it's very useful. We uh, we really like it. Great, I think that's it for questions. I don't see any other hands up if there are. Oh. Thank you so much, Richard, for your presentation. Or, sorry. <laughs> thank you so much, Jason, for your presentation. Yeah, you're very welcome, Lisa. And uh, thank you to everyone. It was very nice meeting all of you and, and take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So as we move down our agenda,
Um, items for information, pick members and connections 2.0. So we're looking for, um, we would like to discuss what's happening upcoming um, Connections 2.0, which is held on April 25th. Um, looking for any ideas from people from the committee to have for guest speakers for the event or even topics for the evening. Um, anybody have any feedback or information or anything that they'd like to see for the Connections 2.0? Uh, I'm so sorry, Liza, but I don't understand the event. Um... So Connections 2.0 is just like a follow up to the previous Connections meeting, except this time we would have like guest speakers, whereas the first Connections was more of an introduction for um, new um, members of, of uh, school council. Okay. Thank you. So this is more like um, like what kind of guest speakers or what kind of topic do you think uh, we can get a little bit more in depth for people who have been on council for a little bit while, maybe have seen all the other presentations and are looking for something new. Natasha, I see your hand up. Jamie, sorry, I also see your hand up. I just wanted to ask, is it, are we still doing things virtually or is it in person? Connections 2.0 will be in person. And is that at the board office or are they at various school locations? I guess it's been a while since we've had in-person stuff, so I don't remember where things take place. It will be at the board office. Oh, okay. I believe it's typically at the board office just because it's the most central because we have such a huge area that we cover. And last year we had an OIAP presentation I'm not sure if that's something you know you, we want to look at again or if we want to go into more detail with something else. Jamie, I see your hand up. Sorry, did you have stuff that you would like to add? I just wanted to mention that we did a survey after um, the first connections and I had put together the survey results. So I thought maybe we could go through those and then those might spark some ideas for um, planning for connections 2.0. Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. So I just shared my screen. Can everyone see the connections photo? I see it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I did put some photos throughout, so that'll be kind of fun to look at too. So we had a total of 88 event registrants and we shared a QR code at the end of the event that people could scan to do this survey. So we had 24 people complete the survey. We had kept it open for a little bit after the event as well. So overall, these are the questions that we had asked. So how would you rate the event? We gave them an option of one to five stars, five stars being the highest rating, 11 respondents rated as five, 11 response rated as, uh, respondents rated the event as four stars, and two respondents rated the event as three stars. We asked um, attendees how they would rate the vendor and networking portion of the event. And 10 respondents rated this uh, portion as five stars, six respondents rated the event as four, seven respondents rated as three, and one res respondent rated the event as two stars, or this portion of the event as two stars. We asked how attendees would rate the presentation portion of the event. 13 respondents rated the, this section as five stars, eight rated the presentations as four and three rated the presentations as three stars. So we did ask um, what type of topics they would like to hear about at future events. Um, a common one that we hear is fundraising, parent engagement, education, that's fairly broad. Um, somebody mentioned the SCDSB character traits, somebody mentioned tutoring and special education, specifically individual education plans. We asked how attendees heard about the event and 12 said from the principal, school or school council, six heard about it from a friend, seven from school board email or a news release, one from Facebook or another social media post and three said other. 
We asked how often they would like us to host events uh, such as connections. 14 said two times a year is great. Six people said three times a year would be great. And four people said four times a year. And then we asked if there's anything else that they wanted to share. Um, majority of the people said they wanted more time with vendors and to network with other attendees. Um, and some had asked for unique content based on secondary school council members. And I just included a quote that somebody said that they loved meeting their PIC representative and that they met a lot of people at the event. That's all for me. Great, thank you, Jamie. Um, so I guess back to the Connections 2.0. Um, definitely looking for feedback from members of um, what would we'd like to see. Natasha, did you have your hand up again? Or is that from before? Sorry. Yes, um, I wanted to, for an idea, I'm wondering if um, having a discussion topic on um, like gender pronouns, gender identity, um, gender expression. So really going through explaining just the differences and um, what each of those things are. Um, I think that there's still probably a lot of learning to do in the community, and um, there's been some new terms that, you know, in the last 10 years, we'll say. So I wonder if that's something that um, parents could benefit from. I know that um, I think there's a lot of language that we use in school that, again, some parents just, they aren't fluent, they aren't familiar with it. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, I do think that whenever we're talking about inclusivity, that pronouns and all that kind of stuff, like absolutely, we can never get enough um, making um, learning um, the different aspects for different people because it is like it is new and it doesn't always apply to our everyday lives if you don't have, um, you know, that makeup in, in, in your community. So we would also, sorry, Lisa, um, we would also like to have a subcommittee if, if everyone's interested or if anyone's interested, if they want to email the pick chair email and myself, and then we can plan a meeting as well. So um, to put the different topics in place. Yes, I think a subcommittee is a great idea. So does everybody like the idea of the gender pronouns, identity, inclusivity? Tony, sorry, I just saw your hand up. Hi, I was just wondering if maybe we could, um, for the next meeting or, or for this uh, um, special meeting that we're gonna have that Kim is gonna help organize, if we could just take a look at what we've had as speakers in the last few years and uh, see if there's any gaps. Because I think there's a, a ton of competing interest with all kinds of very valid things to talk about and discuss. And we have a very short period of time on the uh, on that evening. Uh, so I just thought maybe it would be a good idea to, to take a look kind of more globally to see if we're repeating ourselves in any way, shape or form. That's all. Kim, do you think we can do that? Yeah, we, we've only had a few um, Connections 2.0 events. It's fairly new. Uh, so I think that a lot of the topics will all be new for that aspect, but I could definitely put it all together. Thank you. Um, What about guest speakers? Does anybody have suggestions for guest speakers? Maria, I see your name, uh, your hand up, sorry. Your volume's off. Oh, yes. No, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I would like to see if it can be possible to ask two topics more that I think they are important. One is social media and how to be respectful with the community about social media. So how our kids can interact, uh, showing respect each other. 
this is one. And the other one is about uh, bullying because sometimes we don't know how many kids they are suffering about bullying and sometimes uh, people don't know how to recognize even the, the, the kid who is doing bullying and the kid who is receiving bullying. So I think if we identify a time, we can support the kids and families helping each other. That sounds great. Um, so if I could get everybody, as Kim suggested, to send me a message, we'll start up a subcommittee and we can discuss um, some of the different ideas that were talked about tonight and try to find some guest speakers and nail down some ideas a little bit more in the subcommittee. So if you could just um, email the pick chair, that would be perfect. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, So um, do we have any PIC member updates? Uh, any updates from school councils? Anything happening in your, with your um, family of schools? Questions, oh, comments? Can I take one moment to just mention that programs are due on Friday? So, if any of your schools are asking about programs or um, if you haven't done one yet with your school councils, they are due this week. We can be a little bit lenient on that timeline, but uh, the funds are there and, and we wanna use the, the ministry grant for sure to be able to have parent, parent engagement within these schools too. So Kim, on that topic of programs, can you do like a quick run through so my understanding, and I just want to make sure this is correct, but the principals get like a link and then you go on to um, the program link and that's how you submit your, your. Um, there's your a form, so there's an NM that did go out to principals, but we also did send it to you guys as well and school council chairs and um there's an application so there's two pages the first page is the form one which is the application requesting for the funds up to one thousand dollars schools can also work together and share those funds to do bigger presentations and bigger uh guest speakers per se at the schools um another misconception is that it has to be an approved vendor which it doesn't like within the board because um it's, it's typically after school, obviously, because it's for parent uh, guardian engagement. And when it's a parent deciding that they want to go, then they don't necessarily have to be an approved vendor within the board. It's just someone that you you think, or a topic that you think that's important to, to show parents and guardians and what you think that they would be interested in as well. And so how does the school go about submitting the application? So they, they email it or there's like a link? No, it, it's just an email form that comes to me. Um, okay. I've received them from school council chairs and I've received them from principals. It just needs a signature from the chairperson and from the principal. Um, just showing that everyone is, is in agreement of that event for that time. And, and then we just submit it for approval. Okay. Richard, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I do. Um... I had uh, been back and forth with uh, Kim about this. I was getting uh, messages from uh, several schools that they want to have an event, but they had no leads on finding a speaker. And I was I had queried Kim about the possibility of any sort of resources that are available uh, from the Simcoe board, which and I understand because it's a uh, I understand the reasoning because it's a uh, uh, it's not something that's a I guess school school related per se, but I, I got there is a definitely a, a, a feeling of indecision where where the uh, council chairs for the schools are going. We don't really have an idea of what we want to do to for for uh, for a speaker. So I've I found that that was uh, that was notable that. Uh, 
it's kind of like an in, inaction because they don't feel like they have the resources to make a decision. So I can speak to that. Um, last year, we had approximately 68 um, pro-grant applications, and there were a number of schools, and some schools focused on, on getting parents into the school. So they wanted to bring parents in. Some um, schools had a, a family game night. Some schools had, a, you know, a combination of a movie as well as games. And so that was easier to do. There were other schools who also chose to go with virtual vendors. Um, there was a particular school who did some outside of the box thinking and did a virtual vendor who um, uh, did tours around the world. Um, one of those tours was a safari. So that principal, as well as the chairperson, um, found that vendor and was able to bring in families so that they could tour the world together, in essence. Um, there were other schools who decided to, um, you know, because equity was was very important to the community as well as, um, you know, helping uh, find guest speakers. So we do have a number of guest speakers that we have used in the past. Um, principals also know that they can email um, either Kim or myself um, to get the names of, and, and we do have some names of guest speakers that we do have. Um, that uh, school principals and uh, school council chairs can choose from. The, the difficulty here is when the scheduling of those guest speakers, because we've discovered that sometimes when applications come in late, everybody schedules the guest speakers in, in May and June. That conflicts with a couple of things that for the secondary conflicts with, um, you know, culminating, um, it conflicts with assignments and exams, as well as, you know, when we look at everything happening in June, we have graduation, we have prom, we have semi-formal. So, so it was very hard in terms of getting the scheduling. So that's why we recommend that, you know, program applications be put in early so that we can um, get guest speakers to come in. And this could happen any time from, you know, whenever the program application comes in, all the way through to the end of the school year. It's just a matter of scheduling that person or that guest speaker to come in to have that uh, presentation with the school. Last year, we had five of our high schools um, join together. They combined their $1,000 for a total of $5,000, um, did a very large uh, PD. I believe it was on the adolescent brain and, and development. Um, and they had over 250 parents join on that Zoom. So, wow. yeah, so different schools connecting with uh, each other. Some have the same uh, ideas. And, and when they combined their money, it, it helped with the, uh, the, the pricing for, for certain events. Sure, sure. Sure. Okay. So, so if, if, if there is an indecision going on, it's, it's kind of go via the principal to contact Got it. Good. Yeah, I can, and I can completely understand how you can have like this decision paralysis. Like, there's so many great topics, and not like even at the pick level, we're sitting here talking about connections 2.0, and not really sure like what topic we should go, what guest speaker we should do. So that definitely trickles down to the school level as well, and like the the local parent councils. Okay, um, I think unless there's a, anybody else has their hand up or anybody has any suggestions, um, either updates from your school or suggestions for the Connections 2.0, then we can move on to trustee updates. If possible, if I could have one of the trustees, if you have anything that you would like to um, um, bring forward. Or if you have an overview from the board, anything? I don't mind sharing a little bit. Um, I don't have a lot to share, but I, I just wanted to um, say it's been a really exciting beginning. We've had uh, lots of opportunity for training, so we're learning uh, quite a bit. Um, 
Uh, I think I'm hearing a lot of trustees are getting out to their schools to, to learn about, you know, what's happening. Um, I've been to most of my schools. I think I have two left to visit and I hope to do that soon. So it's been, it's been really great. Um, I participated in some amazing events um, during the holiday season. And I'm actually going to an event on Friday to celebrate the Lunar New Year. Uh, there's a class in Elmville at Veronia that's making dumplings. So I'm going to go and participate in that activity. So lots of learning, lots of uh, really exciting information being shared. Um, so that's about it that I have to share. I don't know if Trustee Connors has anything. Thank um, you, Trustee Garner. This is Trustee Connors. Uh, with being a new board, we basically started mid-November, did most of our training in December. We've only started our meetings this month. Or, um, so there has been not a lot happening, as uh, Trustee Gromit said, we're doing a lot of learning, a lot of relearning for um, a few of us that were remain. It's mostly a new board. I think there was seven. Um, we do have a conference coming up um, where we will be having lots of more learning. I think it's a three day conference. Um, uh, we've been going out to some Chris. It's nice to be able to get out and about again and um, gone to a few. Um, I did an arts night and a few other um, things that the schools are running. It's nice that we have that ability and um, to be up and then out and about to see our schools again. And that's about it. Hopefully next meeting, we'll have more of an update for you all. Thank you, Trustee Connors. Um, I guess we can move on next to um, staff principal updates. Um, principal Jowett. Um, do you have a report from elementary? I sure do. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi. I'm going to be updating on three pieces tonight. The first one is the Tutor in the Schools program. The Ontario Ministry of Education has extended this program for an additional three months until March 2023. Um, currently, we have utilized 120, approximately 120 in-school tutors this year and 115 after-school tutors in order to support our students' learning. Um, so I thought that was some exciting news. I was really happy with that extension. Uh, as for sports, I just wanted to let you know that they are up and running if your kids haven't been telling you about them as well as many clubs. But as for the sports we've had in the fall, cross country, uh, co-ed flag football, intermediate boys volleyball, intermediate girls basketball, junior boys volleyball and junior girls volleyball. So all of them had their seasons and their pennants um, were earned. And in the winter and spring, we've got some upcoming sports. We've got intermediate boys basketball. A lot of the tribes have already started and teams are being formed. Intermediate girls volleyball as well. Junior girls basketball, junior boys basketball. Wrestling if a school has a certified coach, uh, as well as rugby if they have a certified coach. Uh, track and field, which will be coming up for all students in grade four and above as well as three pitch, um, they've got a girls and a boys team at this time. So I thought that's kind of exciting. I know a lot of students and families have been really excited about that, especially about the fact that people can come into our schools to see everything going on. That part's the best. Um, and then just an update on Black History Month and what's going on in our school board. There has been a ton circulating on what we call the Monday messages that we get from Superintendent Jacobs with so much information as well as stuff from uh, Principal Bedford from the DEI team. Um, everything that's been delivered to us so far has been delivered uh, with availability in English and French, which is awesome for us to be able to send out. And a lot of stuff is coming in Google format so we can easily translate it for other MLL learners. Um, so some of the things that we have going on are different DEI lessons, including a DEI newsletter um, that outlines um, just a variety of resources from around the board and from around uh, Ontario that have been vetted, which is great. Um, some of the things have a look ahead lens, which allows our schools time to distribute and teach and learn a lot of these materials prior to us teaching them. So it's been really great that a lot of these messages have been coming in December and January rather than in February. Um, there is a Black Voice a group set up by the DEI department that's connected to secondary schools. A virtual Black History Month session hosted by the DEI department, including the MLL team. MLL, just if you don't know, is multilingual learner. Okay. 
Um, they're going to be talking about the new Black History Month document celebrating Black excellence in Canada. There is a PD session for Black excellence for staff, which will help set them up with mentoring and groups for learning later down the road, as well as opportunities for understanding where they can see themselves within the SCDSB strategic priorities and how they can do advance, various advancement if they would like to do that. Um, and then the Black Racialized Leadership Program is also on the go. I know we got some funding to run a, oh, it's just eluded me. I will come back to it. Um, we've got Improving Math Excellence Program going on, as well as an anti-racism resources that have been shared. So all in all, there's a ton going on. You can almost twice a week, all throughout January right now leading up, go to different PD sessions as staff members to get learning underway. And I know we've got our next meeting, we'll be doing some of our own learning, which I know that uh, Superintendent Solosky will talk to next. Does anyone have any questions about those updates or anything else they need? I don't see any hands up. Just give it another second to see if anybody has any questions. And then I also have uh, Vice Principal Montgomery from Eastview. Do you have that report as well? I do, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. So the first thing I wanted to touch um, on is grade eight to nine transitions. So January throughout all of our secondary schools and our board is a big time to begin that transition from elementary to secondary school. Uh, students pretty much in every secondary school have, we've had grade eight students in already at least once. This was usually done in November around take your kids to work day. Um, that day didn't happen this year so schools found different ways to invite our grade eights in in November so that they could take part in our elective courses so that's things like tech the arts um, the courses where they get more selection as grade nine so they could experience a little bit of those courses and be better able to make selections on their course selections which happen in January and early February now that we're in January, grade eight students are being invited to open houses in the evening throughout all of the secondary schools. I think two were supposed to take place tonight, but got canceled because of the snow today. Um, but those are out and have been communicated in all the secondary schools to families. And a lot of schools are also communicating that through social media so that we can reach out to students that maybe aren't in our family of schools. Um, in some areas, we also have schools doing some unique things around their transitions. For example, in the Aurelia area, um, OSS in Twin Lakes go to uh, an information session that they're invited to on RAMA and uh, present about the different programs within their schools with the Coterminous Board so that students out in RAMA can make a selection as to what they would like to do in secondary school and which school they'd like to attend and ask questions about that of the admin and guidance counselors. So that leads into the next big thing that's happening in secondary and that's course selection, which connects really well with what Principal Pino spoke about earlier. All of our secondary schools are using my blueprint this year for course selection, some of them for the first time. So a lot of the schools are doing things to support their students in um, making sure they understand what to do in selecting their courses. Some of them are doing uh, grade assemblies, others are doing small group sessions with guidance counselors, just walking students through and making sure they're comfortable with the choices they're making um, and ensuring that any questions they might have are being answered. Other schools, a few of them piloted it last year, so those schools have a higher comfort level and are probably hitting the ground running with it. Um, the other thing I was going to touch on is also Black History Month and Principal Jowett hit a lot of things. So uh, some of the things that she talked about were also on my list. So I won't talk about those as well. Um, from the secondary side, uh, principals and teachers are working on different projects within the secondary schools and different ways to highlight Black History Month some with their student groups. So in some schools, we have Black student associations or um, Black excellence groups, depending on what they're being called. Um, and in some of those schools, they're working on different projects with their students, or the students are identifying what things they would like to see happen in the school that will be actioned by other members of the school staff or the admin, or even other students, for example, the leadership group. Um, other things that are happening, um, 
the, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center. So a few of the schools have accessed this amazing resource. And I know, I think it was Richard that was asking about um, program and people to tap into. And I would highly recommend the Friends for Simon Wiesenthal Center. A lot of their um, learning is free, but they do have what's called the Tour for Humanity bus, which does have a small charge. And it's a bus that comes to a school location and will run programming on the bus that's multimedia throughout a day. It sounds fantastic. And I think there's at least three high schools that are currently um, have booked this bus for February into early March. And they offer programming on a variety of um, topics around discrimination, equity, um, so on the Holocaust, and you can kind of choose what suits best for your school. So for example, at ECU, they're coming to see us March 1st, and they're gonna be running um, four sessions for students on the Canadian experience. So this kind of focuses on a variety of topics in Canada that relate to those big things around equity and discrimination and race. And then we'll be running a session after school that staff will be invited to as well. Um, the other thing that they offer um, that we're looking at for our program that is really exciting is a session that they do on online hate and discrimination and how it begins for students, usually in social media games like Roblox. And I'm sure if you have small children, we're all well-versed in Roblox. Um, so they have an online presentation that discusses that and shares the dangers of how that's starting things in our children that we're unaware of and what that can lead to. So that is something um, a number of our schools have tapped into. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions? Thanks, moving on would be our superintendent updates. Okay. Um, in 2021-2022, the Ministry of Education directed Ontario school boards to develop an anti-sex trafficking protocol that was tailored to the needs of our community. In consultation with various committees, including the BIC subcommittee, the Simcoe County District School Board has developed a protocol and relevant training and resources for staff, students, parents, and guardians. The focus of SCDSB's protocol and resources is to protect students and empower school communities to play a key role in fighting sex trafficking and keeping children and youth safe from sexual exploitation. More information, including a link to the SCDSB anti-sex trafficking protocol and associated resources will be available on the Simcoe County District School Board website in the coming weeks. Um, another point is that uh, in support of and in celebration of Black History Month, PIC will hold its February 28th meeting at 5.30 p.m. in person in the library located at Bear Creek Secondary School. This is so that all members of PIC can participate in the PD provided by Dr. Wanda Thomas-Bernard. She is a Canadian senator and the first Black Canadian to have an academic tenure position and become a full professor at Dalhousie University. Her research focuses on anti-oppression and diversity. Dr. Bernard will be speaking about uh, the Canadian Black history and how to create change. This event will also be available um, virtually online. Additional registration information can also be found um, on our SCDSB website in the coming weeks. And finally, character education. Uh, we're actually in the process of looking to revamp and update our character traits and attributes. They are in fact 20 plus years old and are slightly out of sync with our strategic priorities. Our teacher librarians will be looking at introducing character traits and attributes through storybooks with our elementary students and getting a sense of their voice through conversation and a brief survey. We will also be rolling out a survey for secondary students as well as our education staff um, and staff, as well as parents during the early weeks of February. So please keep an eye out for those surveys. We're hoping to have those surveys out by the uh, February 6th uh, deadline.
Great, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? Next would be our social media highlights. Jamie Campbell. Great, so for, um, just as a reminder, this is where I put together a brief summary of everything that we talked about tonight and share it on the board social media. And then we ask that if you're on Facebook or Twitter that you go to um, check out the page later this evening and share the post as well. So the summary I've put together tonight is the SCDSB's Parent Involvement Committee met tonight. Here are some highlights from the meeting. Congratulations to Lisa, who was nominated as chairperson of the PIC, and Richard, who was nominated as vice chairperson of the PIC. A presentation was received regarding the math at home learning sessions and on secondary pathways. The committee discussed the Connections event and began plans for Connections 2.0. And school council chairs are asked to check their school council email account for a new update from your PIC representative in the coming days. The next PIC meeting will take place on February 28th at 5.30 p.m. at Bear Creek Secondary School. Learn more about the Parent Involvement Committee with a link to your page. Thank you, Jamie. Um, one quick question. I'm not sure who could answer this for me. For the Bear Creek, um, secondary school meeting, does that require registration or as the PIC committee, are we are already? As the PIC committee, we are already registered. Okay. However, if uh, you're not able to attend in person and would like to attend virtually, then please let us know so that we can register you for the event uh, virtually. Thank you, that's great information to know. Okay, um, Maria has her hand up. Yeah, oh, sorry, I, mean, I didn't see I'm you. Sorry. I'm sorry, can you just mention again uh, the date? It's February 28th at 5.30 p.m. at Bear Creek Secondary School in Barry. Perfect, thank you so much. Welcome. Okay, so um, next on the agenda, correspondence. There's been no correspondence brought forward for tonight's meeting. Um, and then, then after that is other matters. Are there any other matters from any members of the committee? I see no hands up. So moving on. Um, Notice of motion for next meeting. Are there any notices for the next meeting? Um, with there being none, we'll move to motion to adjourn. If there are no. So again, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the parent, inv parent involvement committee will be Tuesday, February 28th at 5.30 PM at Bear Creek Secondary School. Sorry, Lisa, we do need a motion to adjourn. So we need a mover and a seconder. Okay, so I need somebody to motion, Richard. And a seconder, Tony. Thank you. Um, we'll see you all at the next meeting unless anybody has anything else they'd like to add. I guess we're good. See you soon, everybody.